Hi, I'm Steve Sully, founder of FitTest. And in this short series of videos on atrioventricular nodal blocks uh, geared towards x professionals, in this first video, I'm just going to show you what the categories of AV nodal blocks and their indications and contraindications for exercise and present a brief case study. So first of all, there are three degrees of AV nodal block, first, second, and third degree. In second degree AV nodal block, there are two subtypes which I'll come to. So in first degree AV nodal block, um, there is just a prolongation of the atrial contraction, the, the duration between the atrial contraction and the ventricular contraction. Normally these should be about 0.12 to 0.20 seconds delay from the atrial contraction to the ventricular contraction. And the whole purpose of that is to allow the atria to contract to complete the filling of the ventricle. About 70 to 80% of the ventricle is filled passively. That is just through blood flowing through the atria, through the open bowel, whichever it is, right side is tricuspid, left side is mitral, into, say, the left ventricle, in the case of the mitral bowel. So just allowing that period of time uh, for that to uh, fill passively. And the very last part of diastole is the atrial contraction. And the purpose of that atrial contraction is to just top up the ventricles with the last 20 to 30% of ventricular filling just prior to the ventricle contracting shown as the QRS or the R wave. Now the ideal duration or the ideal interval between the atrial contraction and the ventricular contraction is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. So in the case of the um, uh, first degree AV nodal block, that duration is prolonged to more than 0.20. Now, 0.20 is just from one large, um, from one solid line to the next solid line, or five little squares. Now here we have about eight little squares, which means it's about 0.26 to 0.28 of a second um, from the atrial contraction to the ventricular contraction. And it's occurring for all of the P waves into the next R waves. So it's a consistent finding. It can't be confused with atrial ectopics or some other, uh, some other um, uh, electrical issue in the heart, in the, in the atria. So it is uh, definitely first degree AV nodal block. In terms of exercise, the American College of Sports Medicine guidelines uh, do not contraindicate exercise for people with first degree AV nodal block. But personally, I take a lot of care with um, assessing all clients with any degree of AV nodal block. It's one we're a little bit um, conservative on. There are many other conditions where I'm not conservative. But for AV nodal blocks, I am conservative and I'm very careful. I make sure I, I report them. You can very easily get a single channel ECG to record exactly what is here. Uh, a live core is uh, one example, but there are lots of single channel ECGs now that are very simple to use that would be able to detect this, this particular condition very nicely. You could get it on paper on a screen and send it to the primary care medical practitioner for further diagnosis. Now the treatments, um, they wouldn't treat this necessarily, well there's no treatment really necessarily until this deteriorates further in which case uh, a person will be paced, usually. So um, there's no, as I said, no treatment, but we need to note it. I'm very careful because I'm aware that if this block becomes worse, then the ventricles will take up the rhythm and we could be in ventricular tachycardia during exercise. And this is how it looks on an actual ECG that I downloaded from Google Images. And uh, basically what you're looking at here are the P waves with prolonged PR interval in every case. So these are all prolonged because they're more than one large square uh, distance between the P wave and the R wave. But again, it's about 0.26 of a second. We come on to the second degree AV nodal blocks now. And the first type of this, or Mobitz type one, what happens here is we get a gradual prolongation of the P to R interval. In other words, the P atrial contraction to the R, which is the QRS or ventricular contraction. 
gradual prolongation and then a dropped beat is the characteristic. So you'll notice that the P to P intervals are constant through this record, and it's, but it's that lengthening out of the R waves and then finally a drop beat at the third beat. And the second thing is that you'll notice is that you get a repeating or recurring pattern and that's the thing to look for is that repeating or recurring pattern which will really uh, uh, convince you that it is second degree AV node of block Mobitz type 1. Now second degree AV node of block type 2, there are dropped beats again but the pattern here is quite different in that there's, it's a constant PR interval and that PR interval can either be normal, so all of these are the same, all of these PR intervals that I'm pointing to here are the same. Obviously we can't see them for the drop beats, but the four that are followed with an R wave all have the same PR interval, so there's no prolongation, but there are dropped beats. And in fact, in this record, there are dropped beats every second beat. And so this constitutes um, a second degree AV node of block Mobitz type two, Notice also that the PR interval itself can either be normal length, 0.12 to 0.20, or in this example here, prolonged. So this prolongation here is about 0.22 for that one, uh, about 0.22 again, it's hard to tell. Yeah, about 0.22 for all of these PR intervals. And so that indicates that in this situation, we have a prolonged PR, but equally you could have a normal PR with these regular dropped beats. That would also be second degree AV node of block modes type two. Now, we, um, just before I leave that, the again, a lot of precautions over second degree AV node of blocks. I worry that this block could change during exercise and that we could end up in, uh, um, we could end up in a couple of scenarios. I've actually seen it where the PR interval shortens during exercise, so it becomes a rate dependent uh, AV node or block that actually looks normal in exercise, but it's not. That's one case. That's perhaps fairly safe. The unsafe version that I've seen is where someone goes into a ventricular tachycardia with this sort of conduction defect that we see here at rest. So with these conduction defects, you need to, do need to be cautious. I would be cautious all the way from first degree AV node or block to third degree AV node or block, which is this one. So what's happening here is there's a total dissociation of the P wave regularity and the R wave regularity. On this record, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six P waves. You can only see three R waves, but they're completely out of synchrony. There is no pattern between the P waves and the R waves. And this is what we call third degree AV nodal block or third degree heart block, it's the same thing. And this is the total dissociation of P and R waves. I just see, see here that I wrote third degree heart block. That is exactly the same terminology as third degree AV nodal block, which I, is the term I much prefer. Third degree AV nodal block. Total dissociation of P and R waves. And then we see it down here as well in the actual ECG. Uh, here we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine P waves and we have five R waves and they're totally out of synchrony. Again, this is third degree AV nodal block, total dissociation of P and R waves. Now to come to my case, this is a 83 um, year old uh, female client who had had a previous myocardial infarction, acute myocardial infarction, had stents fitted urgently. She was occasionally or had previously been in atrial fibrillation but is not in atrial fibrillation now. She has heart failure, she's had a mitral valve replacement, and she is being paced. But in this particular case, I'm not sure that she is being paced. In fact, I don't think she is. I think she's in first degree AV nodal block, but I can't be 100% sure because we're not able to see pacemaker spikes in this example. But uh, clearly there's a little bit of arrhythmia here with an early uh, R wave coming in here with maybe a reduced PR interval here. Whereas um, just looking here, clearly here, the PR interval is prolonged here and, and here. So most of the PR intervals are prolonged, but we see one here where the PR interval is normal and the R wave has come in here early. Now, when she went to exercise at 3.5 kilometers an hour and 8% gradient, 
her heart rate had risen to 134. You can't actually see the P waves there because there's such a long duration between the P wave and the R wave. A lot of the P waves are buried in the previous T waves that I'm pointing to here. They're buried in there and you can't see them. I'm just looking along the record. I think I can see a P wave there. So occasionally you can see P waves. And the point I'm making here is that the amount of AV nodal block is actually varying going from the resting condition to the exercise condition, which is making it uh, quite difficult to interpret. And we'll see that a little clearer uh, here as we go through. So in here, I'm just looking for P waves there. It looks like there's a P wave there with a normal PR interval, P wave with normal PR, P wave here with a prolonged PR. So there's definitely some variable, um, variable block here. Now, whether this, I, I can't be 100% sure that this is simply due to pacing and it could well be due to pacing. I'm not ruling that out. But if, if it wasn't for the pacemaker, we would be seeing here some quite variable AV nodal block. Now, what I don't like about this record is as we've gone through the exercise, when we get to peak exercise at 3.5 kilometres an hour and 11% gradient, the heart rate has dropped all the way down to 124 from 134, and I don't like that sign at all. Um, again, we're looking at prolonged PR here, and I'm just looking here for normal looking uh, normal PR. You can't really see them there, but we've got variable block. We've got some arrhythmia occurring here, and we've got a dropping heart rate. So whichever way you look at it, I don't particularly like what is going on here, and I have written this up for the primary care medical practitioner to investigate further. I can't rule out the fact that all of this is due to pacemaker activity. I cannot rule that out. I suspect that, that it's a combination of pacemaker plus um, some normal um, native pacemaker activity, maybe sinus activity. Uh, but I think also there's a, a fairly high degree of AV nodal block going on here, which is certainly uh, contributing to the issues around dropping heart rates and also the arrhythmia. Now in recovery, that was quite unremarkable really. There was one ventricular ectopic, but you can clearly see here, we've gone back to prolonged PR intervals. I don't believe if these are paced, that a pacemaker would pace with such a prolonged PR. So I still suspect that these are, uh, th this is sinoatrial node pacing with AV nodal block. And then back here at uh, 16 minutes recovery, you can clearly see very much like we saw at uh, pre-exercise with very prolonged PR intervals all the way through this record. You can see here that when we went through the exercise test, this certainly looks like a pacemaker, uh, pacemaker working here. And it's quite possible that the pacemaker was working all the way through here, but I don't believe all of the time. And I've certainly passed this record on, but noticing that the heart rate decreased during the latter part of exercise, which I don't like. And that's shown here, the latter part of exercise, the heart rate has dropped. I'm certainly concerned about that, concerned enough to write all this up. Now, I actually don't know what has got come from the write-up of this client. Uh, I haven't got follow-up material here to share with you, but clearly overall, I'm not happy with a few things. The drop in heart rate as exercise intensity increased, the amount of apparent variable block that is going on. There's certainly some AV nodal block here. And I'm, I'm a little bit concerned if the pacemaker is being used, that it, there seems to be some evidence of prolonged PR interval, even when the pacemaker is working. So there's a few concerns there, which I have passed on to the primary care medical practitioner. So that's all I wanted to share with you uh, on, this, um, on this topic of AV nodal blocks and um, just to reiterate before I leave this, um, first degree, second degree, third degree AV nodal blocks, I have concerns about exercising these clients who all levels of AV nodal block. I know I'm being conservative because the American College of Sports Medicine uh, recommends that it's only the third degree AV nodal block that is totally contraindicated to exercise, and I would agree with that, of course. Uh, but second degree, I've, I'm ultra cautious and even first degree AV nodal blocks, I'm cautious with exercise. It's not to say you can't do it, but you have to have an eye, keep an eye on what is going on and be vigilant around signs and symptoms. So if you want to um, get back to me on this, 
you can contact me at info at myfitness.com.au. Have a great day and I'll see you again shortly. Bye for now.